and I am going to present to you about wine tasting. Have you ever just sat there and just thought about how you wanted to taste wine? Why, why is wine tasting so fascinating to some people? Well, to me, I was always intrigued by wine. I've always wanted to love wine, but it was so hard for me to love, so I took a wine class, and I absolutely love wine now. I had been doing it wrong the entire time, and it is just amazing how technical it can be for you to taste wine. So the first thing that I'm going to teach you and demonstrate for you is first what you do is you pour your wine. I don't have the wine bottle with me, but you pour your wine and you let it set. And what you do is you smell it. I don't want you to just take your nose right over here. No, you get your nose way down in there and you smell it because you're not going to get anything right here. You got to get down in there. So the reasoning for smelling your wine is to see what flavors you can get. See what this wine is about. And I'm going to talk a little bit more into depth about the tasting at this part, but just a little hint about what I'm going to be talking about. But smelling your wine can tell you where the region this wine has came from. It goes along with the taste where it can pinpoint it more. So get in there, smell your wine, and see what it smells like. Take note of it. Mark it up in your brain, like, okay, this is what it smells like to me, because it can smell completely different than what it really tastes like. Second, you want to swirl your wine. I know people might say, oh, that's what amateurs do. No, it's not. You, it, it's kind of a key factor. It tells you a lot of things about swirling your wine. First off, it lets your wine breathe. Now, when I say breathe, it means that it gives it, just let it, the aromas come out of the glass. So you can get down there and you can actually smell it. And you can keep smelling it, just swirl your glass. Another reason why you like to swirl your glass or you should swirl your glass is to warm it up. Us being Americans, we don't particularly like our wines warm. So what the problem is with that, especially with old world wines, is that they make their wines to be at a certain temperature for the flavors to actually come out. And so, swirling wine kind of helps warm that wine up. And you'll have different temperatures for your whites, and you'll have different temperatures for your reds, and you'll have different temperatures for your desserts, or your fortifieds, or your sparklings. So, but what you want to do, swirl it. It may be at the correct temperature, it may not be. But just swirl it, let the aromas out, and Another reason why you want to swirl it is something very interesting, right? Something very intriguing is when you swirl the wine, there is something called legs. Um, the legs are the streams that come down from the wine. It's just the streaks. Now, what those legs tell you is how high in alcohol or high in sugar it is. The more the, the higher the sugar is, the slower the legs come down the streams slowly come down. The higher in alcohol, the quicker they come. Your alcohol and your sugar level will most likely never be both high um, unless it is a dessert wine. But your wine right now will um, actually, the wine, okay, the one that you pick, pour glass, look at it, do your swirl and see you can actually pinpoint, okay, well, if it's going slower, then it's going to be lower in sugar, or lower than alcohol. If it's going down fast, it's higher in alcohol, but lower in sugar. So you know what you're getting yourself into when you're tasting this type of wine. Third, breathing. Breathing is absolutely important at this stage. Why I say that is because this is where I learned that I, this is why I didn't like dry wines, or I didn't like a lot of wines, is because I didn't know how to properly breathe. Now what you want to do is when you drink this wine, you need to inhale through your mouth, kind of like slurping, like your mother told you not to do. Don't slurp your soup. Well, you need to when you do this, so you can get all of the flavors in your mouth. That's something that is absolutely key that you need to have. 
So when you're inhaling, when you're taking a sip, you inhale. So you, and you let that go in. And then your fourth thing is exhaling. You don't want to exhale out of your mouth. You want to exhale out of your nose. You want to kind of have like a full, full circle type of deal go on. And through your mouth, out through your nose. So you can actually get all of that full flavor in the palate. You want to make sure it hits everything on your palate. So you'll slurp in and then breathe out through your nose. It helps that flavor that you need to hit all those, all of the, everything in your palate you need to hit. It's very key. Head thing. Leading on to this, um, your taste buds. When I'm talking about palate, taste buds. Um, your taste buds. You need to understand your tongue for you to understand your flavors. So your tongue, the very tip of your tongue is going to be sweet. Your, that's where everything you're going to taste is going to be sweet. On the very front sides of it will be salty. And on your actual sides of your tongue will be sour. And then the very back will be bitter. So you want to hit every single one, swirl it in your mouth, swallow it out of your nose, or exhale out of your nose, so you can hit every single thing in your palate and make sure you actually get it. Like I said, it's just like a circle. It goes. And then, oh, I did backwards. But anyways, <laughs> um, you need to hit everything. It is key. Your taste buds are key in wine tasting. Okay, now. Another thing about tasting is that when you're tasting, you need to figure out what you're tasting. Did you smell exactly what you tasted? If you didn't, that's okay because I've, I've learned that I've smelled a lot of wines that did not taste anything like I thought it would because of the smell of it. And back to what I was saying before about letting your wine kind of warm up is I've learned with a, a couple of European wines or old world wines, um, which are old worlds, I'll explain that, is Italy, Spain, Germany, and France. Those are old worlds. They're going to be more of the traditional types of wines. They are strict on everything. But that's what I was saying, is that when your wine actually does heat up, it may just tastes really bitter to you if it isn't warmed up. It may taste it and then once it does warm up it may smell and taste completely different. For instance when um, I was tasting I think it was a Chardonnay um, I our chef it was too cold so we held it in our hands folded it around and everything and I tasted it beforehand and smelled it beforehand before it got warmed up because I wanted to know the difference. So I swirled it and kept smelling it and then when I let it warm up for a little bit and left it alone and brought it back to me it tasted ten times better it almost I had this bitter smell to it and a bitter taste to it but then when I actually let it warm up it smelled very floral and actually it smelled very good like I wanted to try it and then when I actually tasted it it was more buttery it was the most bizarre thing I've ever done so, I'm now learning that wine is very, very particular in the way that you try it. And you can be having it at the wrong temperature, having your not tasting it right, not inhaling and exhaling right, or not hitting every taste bud, or they're not putting it all in your palate, and it just makes a complete difference. Like now, I absolutely love all wines before I could only stand probably dessert ones if that and it all had to do with understanding my taste and learning how to taste so from me my personal experience what I've learned from wine tasting from the smelling swirling breathing exhaling my taste buds and actually tasting it it made a big difference for me in how I enjoy wine. Now I enjoy dry, sweet, sparkling, fortified desserts. I, I love all of them. I think they're very, I, I want to try everything that has came out. So I hope you really enjoyed this speech. And 
now you know how to taste wine and maybe you'll have the same desire as I do as wanting to taste every wine. Thank you.